Okay. All Hello. right, we'll just give it a moment. Okay, I think we're live. And I'm gonna make sure this is off so that we won't hear any feedback. Okay, great. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kirsten and um, I am the uh, creator of Tofu Land. So if you haven't been to the website yet, tofuland.com has a lot of free resources. And as someone was mentioning earlier, um, a writing task number one song. And um, so that I think should answer our strategy question because that's my strategy. And I'll just answer this question to um, an integrated writing. Should we start with reading or listening first? So I've heard teachers say different things um, about that. And my strategy is to start with the reading summary and then go to lecture. Because for me, that's a little bit easier. I, list, I read the reading first and then I listened to the lecture. So I do it in that order. Um, some teachers teach the opposite where they say, you have to start with the lecture. Um, really in my book, it does not matter. I don't see any difference in scoring for people who start with the reading or people who start with the lecture. Um, as long as you're getting the content in, as long as you're summarizing, what's from the reading, what's from the lecture, um, it really doesn't matter the order. Of course, you have to match the point, right? Point number one from reading has to match point number one from the lecture. That has to be together. But really, as far as what you start with, it, it really doesn't matter. Um, I would say that a good thing to do would be to summarize a little bit more from the lecture than you are from the reading. So you'll see as we do today's essay, what I like to do is do at least two sentences from the reading. Um, if you're short on time, just one, I think we'll do it. And then at least three or four sentences from uh, the lecture um, so that you're giving a little bit more weight, a little more summary to the lecture, um, which should make you happy because who wants to paraphrase a bunch of lines from the reading, right? <laughs> so we'll talk about paraphrase as well. So I'm going to um, leave you guys. I know there's a question here about the independent essay and I'm, I'm not gonna cover the independent essay in this particular class. It's just gonna be the integrated essay because um, I had a special request for that one. So I believe on my YouTube channel, there is one that will be doing, I do in real time. That's the independent essay. So you could absolutely um, go and watch that it, if you wanted to, okay? So what I'll do is I'll start and I'll kind of just walk us through um, what I like to do in order to write this essay, how I like to make it easier. And um, I'll pretend that I'm doing the TOEFL exam, okay? Which I have done before. <laughs> um, and I use this, this particular strategy that I'm gonna show you. This is exactly what I did on the, the day of the TOEFL that I took the test and had a really high score. My writing score was 30, which native speakers should be able to get a 30 on the writing section. Um, so I'll show you exactly what I did, the steps I took in my process. And then as I do this, if you wanna type up some questions in the chat, congratulations. Yeah, I don't, I don't think of it as a great honor. It's just, I was born speaking English. You know, that's, that's the only thing. Uh, you guys, um, you are the real heroes in the story. You're the ones um, that because of our, you know, the way, economy is structured, the way the world is structured, and you're forced to really, you know, become masters of English, and English speakers just aren't. Um, so you guys are the real congratulations. You guys are the real heroes. Um, <laughs> in fact, I want to write a book about you guys one day. I hope you guys will share your stories and, and contribute to a book. That's just like a little idea I've had in the back of my mind that hasn't left me yet. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. It's true. So just absorb that. You guys are the heroes. <laughs> so I'm going to share my screen and um, we will look at a reading. I'm going to also share my sound. Okay. And let's go away. Okay. 
So this, by the way, this is a reading off of the TOEFL Land website. Um, it's very similar to what we would see in the real TOEFL test. Um, and I'm just gonna go through now, of course on TOEFL, you get three minutes to read the reading. Um, and you can choose. Some people like to read everything, everything, everything line by line. Um, I think it's wise to skim, especially if you're a slow reader. And I'll show you what skimming looks like, okay? And I don't need to write down everything. I'm gonna take some TOEFL notes as if I were writing on my little piece of paper in the, in the testing um, atmosphere, right? But um, you don't need to write notes on everything because of course this will stay on the screen as you're writing your essay, right? So um, definitely the intro paragraph, I wanna read thoroughly because it's introducing me to this idea. I got my topic, it's about well, something about volcanoes and dinosaur extinction, extinction. Okay, so it says, while the theory that dinosaur extinction was caused by an asteroid impact 66 million years ago remains prevalent, there is mounting evidence in support of the volcanism theory. Okay, so when I skim, and that was a whole read through of that first line, but I'm looking for what are they talking about? Main subject. Okay, they're talking about volcanism theory. What is it? Oh, good, they'll tell me. According to the volcanism theory, dinosaur extinction was caused by the successive massive volcanic eruptions that took place in India. So there it is, lots of volcanic eruptions in India. And then they're gonna present several pieces of evidence to support the theory. Okay, so I know this whole reading is gonna be about volcanism and um, that the dinosaurs went extinct because of all these volcanic eruptions. Now, first piece of evidence. <laughs> first, major eruptions of volcanoes in the Deccan region of India would have emitted enormous gas clouds that would have resulted in climate change. Okay, great. So I've got my topic, I've got my first piece of evidence. So over here in my notes, I might do uh, dinos dead because of what? Volcanoes. And then the first thing is, well, something about these gas clouds. Okay, and these gas cat clouds cause oops, climate change. Okay, so that's my first note. Now, if I'm truly skimming, that's probably all I would need right there is just that first little bit of info. And then I would go right to the second paragraph. And it says, okay, second piece of evidence is what I'm looking for. Around the time of extinction, fossil evidence shows that animal populations gradually declined over time. This steady decline corresponds to volcanic eruption patterns. Okay, I had to read the second sentence there just to see like, okay, what are this fossil evidence? Why is that important? Oh yeah, it's like corresponding to or happening together with all of these volcanoes that are erupting all over the place. So that's like the second piece of evidence, right? Again, there are several pieces of evidence to support the theory of volcanism. So I know that volcanism is supported here, right? And this is support number one. <laughs> support piece number two is, we've got, again, fossil evidence. Declined over time, I'm gonna bold, Bold in that baby fossil evidence. Okay. And then this corresponds to volcanic eruption patterns. Okay. So I would write that down. Again, do you need to take a lot of notes? No. But I'll tell you why um, I like to is because it gets me ready to anticipate what the lecture might do. Right, so I hear a lot of students saying, oh my gosh, Kirsten, like the lecture goes so fast and I can't catch all the details. I don't know like what they're talking about. Well, you can actually start to predict what's gonna happen in your lecture, right? You can anticipate what's gonna happen. So I'll show you how to anticipate it, ready? Fossil evidence corresponds to volcanic eruption patterns. Okay, 
So I know that when I'm listening to my lecture, they're going to say something about these gas clouds. And most likely, the relationship is always, not always, but most like 98% of the time, <laughs> right, is um, opposite. So if this reading is supporting that the dinos all, dinosaurs all died because of all this volcanic eruption activity, the lecture is probably going to be like, nah, it's not the volcanoes. It's something else. Something else. Something else happened. Something else happened to maybe change the climate in some way. It wasn't the gas clouds from the volcanoes. Something else happened that shows that maybe this fossil evidence is is not good, right? Or something's wrong with this fossil evidence. Maybe it doesn't correspond to volcanic eruption patterns, right? So already I'm getting the idea like, okay, be listening for these things. And that will help you um, to, to kind of catch what's coming. Um, and again, if I'm skimming, I would just go to the third, third point, third paragraph. The dust resulting from volcanic eruptions carries high concentrations of iridium. Iridium, and again, I don't really know anything about this, so I'm going to read one more sentence that maybe will tell me. Iridium was also found at the geological rock layer that marks the mass extinction event at the end of the Cretaceous period. Okay, mass extinction, of course, of dinosaurs. So this piece of evidence is going to be important because it's um, happening at the same, you know, when they found iridium, they also, this was the same time as the mass extinction event, right? So um, this indicates, and then I look at this last thing to bring around back to the volcanoes, indicates volcanic dust emissions of iridium over time. So <clears throat> got it, all these volcanoes, now they're, they're erupting. So they're giving off all this iridium and this evidence was found around the time of the dinosaur extinction event. So I'm gonna take a note of that right over here on my little piece of paper. I'm gonna write down, probably I'm gonna write down iridium. Uh, and this is from, of course, the volcanoes erupting. Um, and also found at mass extinction um, of dinos. Okay, so those are my notes. And um, I just want to pause for a moment. And again, if you have time in the three minutes, you probably, if you did a quick skim, um, you might have time to go back and like read everything, right? If you really wanted to, you absolutely could, right? We've got the gas clouds, gas, ash, dust would have covered the sky and for a time prevented the sun from warming the earth. Following this cooling, the carbon dioxide emitted post eruption would have caused greenhouse warming. Uh-oh, so now it's getting warmer. Drastic fluctu fluctuations from cold to hot temperatures have huge impacts on ecosystems. Furthermore, the sulfur emitted would have caused acid rain and destroyed vegetation. As a result, the food chain would have deteriorated, leaving dinosaurs with nothing to eat. All right, so these gas clouds, climate change, hot, cold to hot, um, you've got acid rain, different vegetation, and therefore the food chain um, would, have, would have died, right? Deteriorated means decay, die, decline. Um, so there are the details there. Again, if you wanted to read this whole thing, we've got the fossil evidence shows that animal populations gradually declined over time. The steady decline corresponds to volcanic eruption patterns, a marine organism known as, ooh, foraminifera <laughs> showed a downturn 300,000 years before mass extinction. This is a detail, right? They're giving an example. If the asteroid impact theory were true, the fossil record might show evidence of sudden mass killing. Instead, the fossil record points to a steady decline. Okay, so we've got the steady decline 
It was really gradual. It was not like all of a sudden. So the fossil evidence shows that. Um, then we've got the dust, and I think we've covered this, resulting from volcanic eruptions carries high concentrations of iridium. And then this iridium was also found at the geological rock layer that marks the mass extinction event. Iridium concentrations were found in rock representing a span of 300,000 years, which indicates volcanic dust emissions of iridium, again, over time, gradual, not so all of a sudden. Okay, so again, it's your choice. You can skim, you could read. Um, again, look at your time. You got three minutes, so choose the one that you feel like, okay, I'm gonna get my three points in. I've got my three points, and now you're prepared for listening to the lecture. I'm just gonna put this over time thing in because that seemed like a, a key idea too with that second point, gradual. Okay, so I'm gonna stop my share for just a moment and check in with our chat just to see if, oh, you guys are quiet. Okay, no questions so far, we're good to go. You ready for lecture time? What about modifiers? Ooh, I don't know, we can talk more about modifiers maybe when we start writing, yes. Yeah, so if you have any questions, let me know now. Learned a new thing, okay, cool. <laughs> Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll listen to the lecture because again, I want to keep this in real TOEFL experience here. Um, so extra points if we write more about the passage details. No, I mentioned this at the beginning. Um, so mostly you want to focus on the lecture. Okay, when you summarize, focus more on summarizing the lecture than the reading. Okay, and the reason why I say that is just because from a TOEFL grading perspective, you know, when you are um, looking at someone's essay, let's say for me, the grader, I know that you can see the reading the entire time. You can look at that reading and summarize it pretty well. The lecture might be a little bit more challenging for you to summarize because now it's going to have some details. They're speaking really fast, right? So really from a grading perspective, I really love an essay that has covered the lecture and that you just give the main idea, you know, point one from the reading, point two from the reading, point three from the reading. You got the main idea, great. Now I'm looking at those lecture details, okay? So um, yes, my YouTube channel is TOEFL Land, two L's. Yeah, got it, thank you, yeah. So is it safe to only skim? Um, I would try it, try it both ways. I, what I think will happen for you, I'm just predicting, I don't, I don't know you personally, but just, just a prediction. Um, you'll probably be able to skim it in about one and a half minutes, maybe two. If you're new at skimming, it kind of takes time. Um, and then that'll give you some time to, to read fully a little bit more. Okay, but the main thing is capturing those three points. So the only way to really test for you, is it safe to skim? Because everybody's a little bit different. Um, some people, I was working with a student just this week who realized, oh my gosh, I have to read the whole reading passage for me, for myself to really feel comfortable and confident to get it. And some people are like that. Some people need to read the whole thing. That's why I did both versions. With others, they're safe to skim because they're like, yeah, I feel confident, I got it. Now the reading stays on the screen the whole time. So even if you don't have it all the way, you can always look at the screen, right? As, as you're summarizing, you're like, oh, what was that point number one again? Oh yeah, I, okay. And then you're, you're summarizing it. So um, that's why I say it's fairly safe for most of us to skim because you can always look at it. Okay, so we are going to go to the lecture and I'm going to share my screen once again and hopefully the sound will be okay for you guys. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay. The author would have you believe that dinosaur extinction was solely the result of volcanic eruptions. 
However, the volcanism theory has weaknesses, and the writer overlooks several factors. First, the volcanic eruptions within the Deccan region of India did not make a significant enough impact to cause mass extinction. This is because most of the lava that erupted came after the impact of an asteroid that hit the Earth underneath the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. 75% of the lava erupted after the asteroid hit, so the volcanic activity couldn't be responsible for the extinction event. Furthermore, an impact from an asteroid would result in giant dust clouds that would bring about climate change. Carbon dioxide, sulfur, and other toxic gases would be emitted after an asteroid impact and destroy the ecosystems dinosaurs once thrived in. Next, the author claims that there is no fossil evidence that indicates sudden death of dinosaurs living at the time of impact. However, a recent excavation site in North Dakota did show evidence of sudden mass killing. The fossils of organisms, varying in age and species, indicate that they all died on the same day. There is also evidence that seismic ocean waves and debris arrived at the site approximately 10 minutes after the asteroid hit the Yucatan Peninsula. In regards to iridium, well, what the author omits here is that iridium is commonly found in asteroids. After impact, melted rock debris would have launched into the sky and been carried long distances by winds. Iridium-rich dust from the meteor would be the last to fall to the Earth after impact. Based on the emission rates of iridium from Hawaiian volcanoes, volcanic eruptions alone cannot account for all the iridium observed in geological records at the time of mass extinction. Ooh, okay, so I'm going to stop my share. Don't freak out. <laughs> Usually after a lecture, there's like, ah, I, I couldn't understand everything. Oh my gosh, there's so many details, right? So don't freak out. Um, I'm going to share my notes with you. And um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know. I feel your pain. Uh, so um, here's the thing, right? Even if you didn't catch everything, that doesn't necessarily prevent you from getting a high score on this, on this writing essay, right? So you can technically, and we'll talk about this, but, and we'll, maybe we'll see it in writing, but you can technically um, get away with a little bit of just moving in the opposite direction than the reading, right? So even if I, let's say, oh my gosh, I totally lost point number three. Like I have no idea what they said, but I know what the reading says. So I can start to speak about the lecture, just one sentence, that first summary sentence of it as knowing that it's gonna be the opposite or something different than the reading, okay? So no freaking out, we're staying, we're staying calm, we're staying focused, doing the thing. So let me go to my notes. And um, I was writing at first, but I wanna share them with you on screen as well. So let's go to our notes on the lecture. So what did they say, um, let's see, about to do, do point number one. Obviously the whole lecture is talking about how, no, it couldn't have been, right? Um, not, it's not the volcanoes. Um, and instead the lecture seems to support the idea of the asteroid theory, right? We heard about the asteroid um, coming down. And if you're not familiar with this word asteroid, TOEFL loves to talk about asteroids a lot, space, astronomy, all of those good things. So it's basically this big gigantic space rock, right? That would come down and, and hit the hit the earth. So lecture says, okay, it's not the volcanoes causing um, dino extinction. It's actually this asteroid. And the first thing they talk about, of course, is they're gonna say something about this climate change business. And I have in my notes that really the um, volcanoes did not have a significant impact. Uh, so volcano, I'll put like this, um, not a significant impact. 
And they also mentioned, um, right, that 75% of the lava, so lava erupted after the asteroid hit. So that would be another maybe good one to have in your notes. Um, uh, erupted after the asteroid hit. Okay, and they do mention this little, let me go back to, let me get rid of this screen for a second. Our reading, uh, no, I guess they don't mention this one. No, they don't mention it in the reading. Okay, I thought they were might mention something about the asteroid, but they didn't. Um, so 75% of lava erupted after the asteroid hit. So therefore it's likely that the asteroid maybe caused the extinction, not the volcano. So volcano couldn't have been responsible. The second point, again, going back over here, right, was about the fossil evidence. And the lecture actually says, hey, there was fossil evidence. <laughs> and it existed. <laughs> and then we get into some details. And if anyone caught the location of this fossil evidence that existed, um, you're amazing. Um, I have in my notes that it happened in North Dakota. That's where the evidence was found that happens to be a state in the United States. If you didn't catch that, no worries. I think you can get away with not having a location, but just saying that in fact, there was fossil evidence found and there was evidence, by the way, of mass killing. Hopefully you had that in your notes, that it was actually sudden, oops, sudden. And it, all this evidence shows that all the animals died or animals in that area um, died uh, in the same day. Yeah. Okay, then we have also, and I think if you miss this part, again, not such a huge deal. They, they talked about these waves and debris. I'm gonna write this word down just because TOEFL also loves this word debris. So if you've got some you know, vocabulary notebook that you're using for TOEFL and uh, you haven't come across these words yet, really good stuff. So debris is like, I think of a storm and after a storm, like, like you have really high winds and the winds are blowing the trash cans around or you have trees that fall down and you have um, just things all over the street. That's all debris. Right. The, my really simple definition of debris is stuff. It's just stuff and usually, you know, trash. OK, so it's um, stuff that came 10 minutes after. So came uh, 10 minutes after uh, the asteroid hit. So, again, pointing to this asteroid being the cause of dinosaur extinction and not necessarily. Um, and they mentioned seismic waves, which are these really, really big waves. Um, so there's, there's the fossil evidence. That's what the fossil evidence really shows. And then for our third point, we go back to this idea of iridium. And we have this idea that iridium is not only found in, you know, volcanic dust clouds and things, but it's also found in asteroids. <laughs> right? So, um, yeah, it's found in asteroids. So it could have been from the asteroid. And um, this would have been kind of falling down to the Earth uh, after the asteroid hit. So, um, you know, they mentioned, again, they mentioned that word debris, rock debris would have fallen down, then the, um, then this iridium layer would have um, hit, right, as well. And so it wouldn't have been volcanic eruptions alone. That's what I've got. They mentioned something about Hawaii and volcanic eruptions there. I'm not gonna worry about it. I kind of missed that detail again. Hey, it happens. You're not gonna be able to catch 100% of everything. It's just being able to catch enough to turn it into a successful essay. Um, so I'm gonna write not volcanic eruptions alone. Um, and 
that's it. Okay, so now that I've got, I'm gonna change this just one R for everything about this. Okay, by the way, oh, I'm so glad I made that mistake. Okay, I see this in TOEFL essays a lot where students will be writing their essay and let's say you wanna spell iridium and like me, you just put two R's in there. Um, double check, right? I just went back to the original text. You're gonna see it on your screen. You'll be like, oh, how do I spell iridium? There it is. That's how you spell it, <laughs> okay? So really simple. I know that sounds so simple, but usually when you're in a test-taking situation, um, then you tend to forget simple things. So using the reading here to know, okay, how do I spell that? Um, I'd also point out using the reading to lead you to correct grammar is also really important because you'll see in the reading, right? This is, and the reason why I picked this particular reading today is because it's theoretical, right? It's not a fact. Scientists don't really know what caused the extinction of dinosaurs, right? This person says it's volcanism. The other person says it's the asteroid, right? So they're both theories. They're not facts. So that's why you'll see whenever you have a theory of something that happened in the past, right? You have the hypothetical, it would have done this. It might have done that it could have caused this. It would have deteriorated. Do we know for sure? No, because otherwise that would be simple past, right? It caused, it deteriorated, right? So when I go to write this essay now, I'm also going to maybe have to use this construction to, to summarize um, what's going on here. So I will just, um, I know there are some questions maybe going on in the chat. So I just want to check in with that. Thank you guys for, yeah, North Dakota State in the Northwestern region of the US. Perfect. You are so organized. Well, I try to be, sometimes I'm not, but thank you for saying that. <laughs> okay, so here is the true moment um, where we start to really dig into the essay. And I really just start with, um, my notes. And of course, someone mentioned the song. So when I pretty much when I sat down to take this test right before the writing section, you know how you have like a few minutes and they're just they're just talking about the instructions, how to do it. You already know how to do it. So when they're talking to you and you, you've got a moment right to just be with your piece of paper and just write down some key things that will keep you organized. Now, for me, my song keeps me organized. OK, and if you don't know the, the song I sing, it's, it is up on my YouTube channel. But the song goes like this. Both the reading and lecture discuss. Both the reading and lecture discuss. OK, and then I'm going to leave that just blank for a moment as I explain my song. So they're going to discuss something. And then the next sentence, while the reading, oops, says that something, it says something, the lecture disagrees, okay? So I have that little song in my head, both the reading and the lecture discuss, both the reading and lecture discuss. While the reading says that, the lecture disagrees. While the reading says that, the lecture disagrees, okay? That's always my intro paragraph. Now, some teachers have a very fancy intro paragraph, um, again, I really don't think your intro paragraph is very key to scoring high. It's all of these details and all of your grammar that's really going to come after this. That's going to determine the majority of your score. So I like to keep my intro really short and sweet. Okay, so that's going to be my intro. And again, what I write down on this little piece of paper as I'm waiting is my my little system that I use to remember the verbs I'm going to use. So I like to remember CIA. I don't know if you know the US government has a CIA kind of famous for their, I don't know, activities, let's say. <laughs> so you can think of CIA and then I go A S 
P, C I A A S P. All right, and each one of those letters is going to stand for a verb that I'm going to use. So I'm going to use the verb claims for my C, insists. I so wish I was talking to you guys right now because I'd have you guys sing the song, <laughs> but you can't after this. C I A A S P. So claims, insists, and then I do asserts. Let me just bring this down so you can see it. Oh, I'm old school with my Word documents, I know. So claims, insists, asserts, argues, states, points out that. Now, the reason I like to use these words and notice they all have an S at the end of them. So you'll always be in the present tense when you summarize. So the reading says, the lecture claims, the reading states that, okay? So I always construct it like this, just because number one, it's pretty easy to remember. And number two, it'll give me word variety. So that means I'm not using says, 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 says over and over again, right? I have some different words that I can use and that's really important on the TOEFL. You don't wanna keep using the same words again and again because the computer picks up on that and there is going to be a deduction for it so try not to be repetitive so that's why i have my verbs again i already have c-i-a-a-s-p in my mind i write it down on my piece of paper so i know the verbs i'm going to use i also know beforehand the transition words that i'm going to use so transition words will start my paragraph and then they'll come into the middle of my paragraph when I transition from the reading summary to the lecture summary. So I'm gonna do, it to start the paragraph, first, next, finally. And if you've listened to my song, you know I sing it like that. Okay, first, next, finally. And then I'm gonna use as transition words, however, in contrast, on the other hand, <laughs> Okay, and I'm like ready to rock, okay? This is just my skeleton structure that I have and it makes me feel like, okay, like most of this essay is already there. I just gotta fill in the blank, okay? So if I go back up and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna copy paste this little guy. I'll show you how to write the introduction or how I like to write it. Again, is my way the only way? Of course not. There are many ways to go about it. I'm just showing you a way that has really worked for a lot of my students and has just made the writing part a lot easier. Because when you already know your song, your writing task number one song, it just takes the pressure off. You don't have to think of the sentence construction quite as much. You already know, you already have the sentence almost there, right? but now it's about using it correctly. <laughs> so both the reading and the lecture discuss. After this, I always wanna now, what is the reading and the lecture about? Well, they're about dinosaur extinction and the causes really of dinosaur extinction. One says it's caused by volcanism. The other says it's caused by asteroids. So maybe I'd put that, discuss the theories, um, of uh, the theories I could do, yeah, discuss the reasons or theories. I'm gonna put theories because there you go. And also what I could do too, when I'm trying to think is how did, the, how did they introduce it? Oh, they introduced it with the theory of dinosaur extinction it was caused by an asteroid, but not so much. This one is about volcanoes. So. Yeah, you can always look there. What you don't wanna do is completely copy exactly what the reading says. Um, that will result in not a good score. Um, and it's called plagiarizing. Um, you're basically stealing word for word somebody else's words. So you wanna put it in your own words, okay? So um, let me do this. Both the reading and lecture discuss the possible causes, um, and I wanna keep this pretty small, but I'll move it in here, of dinosaur extinction. Well, the reading says that, and I just remember this, right? It's volcanism. Volcanism was the cause 
the lecturer disagrees. And then boom, I'm done. I'm done with intro. I know that looks really short. It is really short. I promise you I used it and it was great, okay? <laughs> I didn't need a big fancy intro. I would rather see you get really into the details that are coming up next, okay? Now, of course, if you're in a situation where you're like, oh my gosh, I did not catch the details of the lecture or whatever, then yeah, of course, you know, jazz up your intro, do what you gotta do, but um, you guys are gonna have your, your details. No problem. Okay, so then I go over here and I say, okay, here's my first paragraph. I'm gonna write first, first, oops, first, if I can type, I guess I lost that ability. Okay, first, the reading. Now, I like to keep it consistent. The reading, the lecture. There are gonna be people who write the author, the um, text, the passage, um, the writer says, okay, that's all fine. Um, I like to keep using the reading and the lecture. And I know I just said, don't be repetitious, but on, in this situation, in my opinion, it's not a bad thing to be repetitious because what you're establishing is like a source, right? This writing task basically is TOEFL's way of, and let me stop my share for a second just to explain this, right? This is basically TOEFL's way of saying, hey, do you know how to summarize academic information from this source over here and that source over there, right? Because when you go to college, um, that's what you do. You summarize information. If I'm writing a research paper, I'm going to write and I'm going to say, oh, this information came from over there. And this was by Smith and this was by Jones or whoever author I'm citing. So for me as a reader, I like it when I know my source. Oh, that comes from the reading, that's Jones. Oh, that comes from Smith, that's Smith. But if I start to say Jones as the writer and Jones as the author and Jones as the text, now I'm like, oh, well, who are you talking about, okay? So that's why I personally like to keep it consistent. Um, it's up to you, your choice, but that's what you'll see me do um, as far as how I like to write this essay, okay? But, um, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong with calling it the passage. I would just keep it consistent with the passage. There's nothing wrong with calling it, you know, the lecturer or the speaker. There's nothing wrong with that. If you wanna use it, great, just be consistent. So I've got the reading and I'm gonna go up here and use my first verb claims. The reading claims that. And now I like to go to my notes. Instead of looking at the reading first, I've already got some, some stuff and that'll help me. Oh yeah, gas clouds, climate change. Okay, so that'll help me with writing this first sentence at least. Right, the reading claims that volcanoes, again, it's all about supporting volcanism. Um, the gas clouds, oops, clouds, from volcanoes caused climate change. Okay, now, ideally, I want one more sentence that explains, right, how this climate change affected the dinosaurs. So again, you could maybe do this from memory or you could look back at your reading um, because it's right there. Um, and you've got this um, idea that the cold to hot had huge impacts, right? And as a result, I would say this last sentence is a really good one to bring in, right? The food chain went down, deteriorated, decayed, lessened, right? And the dinosaurs had nothing to eat. So that's the, that's the, sentence I'm gonna do. I mean, I think that one kind of sums, sums it up really well. So usually if you look in the first sentence and the last sentence, you might find some good stuff, but not always. You might have it a specific example here, but we wanna stay pretty general when we summarize. Now, I had a question earlier about paraphrase. So I wanna break this down um, and I wanna, I'll break it down with 
this particular sentence. So a paraphrase, which you already know because TOEFL reading section has a question all about paraphrase, is when you take a sentence and now you're going to change the sentence and put the sentence in your own words, okay? Now, this is a really important skill to have um, for academic purposes. And some of you might not be going to school, right? Taking TOEFL for other reasons, job reasons or, or certification reasons and stuff like that. And you're like, yeah, Kirsten, I don't care about paraphrase. <laughs> um, well, TOEFL does. <laughs> so um, for that purpose alone, we got to care about it too. So um, the thing that I like to do here to make paraphrase easy is to look at the subject, to look at the verb, and to look at the object, okay? Now you don't have to be crazy about grammar here. Basically what you're doing is looking at what are the most important words of that sentence, take a note of them, and then see if you can rephrase it using your own words. So if you've ever done direct translation, let's say from your native language into English, if you took a sentence and directly translated word by word, like you did this word and then you did this word and then you did this word, I don't know if you've ever tried that, but, um, it results in a really bad sentence, right? If you do it word by word, like I see students try to paraphrase and they'll be like, oh, what's a synonym for food? Or what's a synonym for dinosaurs? You know, and they're trying so hard to come up with a different word. Um, sometimes you have to use the same words they do. Okay, first of all. But second of all, it's just not gonna result in a really good sentence that makes sense. So what you want to do is get the general idea of the sentence and then come up with your sentence. So I've got my subject here, the food chain. Okay. And I could actually maybe think of this as, well, the food chain is basically like animals, right? Animals and plants. Um, so they just you know, talked about vegetation right here, destroyed vegetation, right? So that's part of the food chain. So you could, you know, technically change that to animals and plants if you really wanted to. Um, <clears throat> or we could, you know, go back to this idea of ecosystem, like the ecosystem is impacted. So I might write down just animals, plants, okay? What's my verb? Oh gosh, would have deteriorated. The basic idea is, they declined, right? They went down, they started to die off. So another little synonym there. Again, if you don't know this word, that's a really good word to write down for your TOEFL notebooks, vocabulary notebooks. Um, so I'm gonna say, I wanna use the word declined in this situation, okay? And then um, of course, dinosaurs died. Yep, and if you have questions, I know I know you got some questions. I'm gonna look in that chat in a moment. So just go ahead and drop your question in the chat. Um, dinosaurs died. Okay. So now I'm not even gonna look at this sentence anymore. Just focus right here. Animals, plants declined. And this is the result, dinos died, okay? So I wanna take this and now I wanna bring it into a coherent and complete sentence in my essay. I'm just gonna, just for our purposes here, just copy and paste it, right? You guys don't mind if I do that so that at least we can see um, our original. So I might say um, climate change, right? I just ended with climate change as a result or maybe, mm, Sure, why not? As a result, <laughs> um, the um, environment wants to capitalize that. The environment shifted. Oh, environment is such a good word to spell. Environment, <laughs> correctly on TOEFL, by the way. Oh, good one to study. It's always a tricky one. Um, so the environment shifted, 
causing animals and plants to decline and oop, decline and the dinosaurs to die. Okay. Now I would leave it at that. I would not um, do any other summary from the reading. Um, I would just leave it at that. Okay. Ruin or depravity? Yeah, great. <laughs> okay, cool. Another synonym for deteriorated. Cool. So now I'm ready to transition to my lecture. I hope you guys aren't falling asleep yet, but here's my transition word for the lecture, however. So I'm gonna write in however, and the lecture, ooh, and I have that verb, ooh, insists. So I'm gonna use that verb insists, that. And now I get to go, and notice I'm using that at the end of insists, claims that, insists that, and whatever you put after that must be an independent clause, meaning a full complete sentence all on its own, okay? So however, the lecture insists that, what does the lecture say? Let me go to my notes. Ooh, volcanoes really didn't have a significant impact um, after, you know, with the climate or anything. And in fact, the volcanic eruptions have to happened after the asteroid hit. So that's what I wanna summarize. That's what I'm gonna say. Volcanoes, volcanoes did not have a significant impact right, on the environment. Um, in fact, ooh, good little transition for emphasis. In fact, 75% um, and you can use numbers here if you wanted to or if you want it to be more formal, <laughs> you can write it out either way. In fact, 75% of the lava eruptions happened after the um, asteroid hit. Okay. Now, a lot of students get really crazy about trying to, you know, making sure to paraphrase. Like, let's say you wrote down exactly what was in the lecture and you're like, Kirsten, what if I write down exactly what they said in the lecture? Is that really bad? Am I plagiarizing? Am I stealing their words? Answer is no. If you have that in your notes and that's what your notes say and that's exactly what was in the lecture too, great, write it down. You won't be penalized for that. Um, in fact, you know, that means you have like a genius photographic memory if you can remember exactly word for word what the lecture said. Um, so don't worry about that for the lecture, just whatever your notes say. Um, and again, by the way, let me just pause and talk about notes for just a brief second please do not feel like you have to take notes or even a lot of notes or any notes because some people can actually visualize, right? As they listen to the lecture, they start to visualize a picture and they can remember that on their own and from their mind. I'm not that person. I like to write down things, but again, on TOEFL, it's really challenging, right? To write down as the person is talking, as you're writing down a word, you're also thinking about that word, right? And then you're missing something that's happening that they're saying next. So please use your best judgment here. Some people are really great note takers. Some others are not so great note takers and they do better just by painting the picture in their mind. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, so if you need to take less notes, that's absolutely fine. I had a student once that never took a note and had consistently amazing details in the essay, right? So taking notes is not the only way to go about this, all right? Now, here's what I recommend. See how I have two sentences from the reading? I'll just kind of highlight, there's my reading summary. And here is, I have two sentences from the lecture. I want as a kind of a goal to hit three or four sentences from the lecture. And let's say I don't have much to say any, anymore from my notes. What I can say is I can go back to, hey, 
the lecture says it couldn't be volcanism. It, it just, this is not a good theory, right? That's what the whole lecture is about. So <clears throat> I just left off with 75% of the lava eruptions happened after the asteroids hit. Great, I just go back to the main idea of the lecture. I can say, therefore, um, the volcanism theory could, okay, now, remember I said, we're talking about a theory, it's not a fact. And I said, look at how the reading does this, right? It would have done this, it would have done that, um, it could have done that, right? That's the grammatical structure that I also wanna bring into this particular sentence. So therefore the volcanism theory could not have been the cause of dinosaur extinction. Boom. Okay, so I've got my third sentence and it kind of ties everything together. And that's my paragraph one, supporting, supporting paragraph number one. Okay, and then I'm gonna continue here to supporting paragraph number two, and then I'll check some questions if you guys have them in the chat. Um, so my transition word here is gonna be next. So that's what I'll use, next. And I'm gonna use the same structure, the reading. I'm gonna use a different verb though, assert. Yeah, the reading asserts that. And now I go back to my notes, not necessarily the text itself, but I can. Oh yes, now remember this is all about fossil evidence, right? So let me go see what the reading says. Here's what the reading says. There uh, is fossil evidence that corresponds to volcanic eruption patterns over time. They were all about gradual here, right? Okay, so I'm gonna write about this fossil evidence to start. That'll be my first um, little note here. The reading asserts that fossil evidence shows support for the volcanism theory. Not too specific yet, but I'm gonna get there, okay? So let me go to my notes again and then I can go to the, um, the reading too. Right, corresponds to volcanic eruption patterns over time. And here's where you can check in again with the reading the steady decline of um, animal populations gradually declining. So let's, let's write about that. And I'm gonna keep that on the screen because of course that's how you'll take the TOEFL test. You'll be able to see that on the screen as you write in a much better way than I'm showing you here, but it'll all make sense, right? On the real TOEFL, the screen is above you and you'll have your essay on the other screen. So, the reading asserts that fossil evidence shows support for the volcanism theory. Um, there is, um, or the animals, right? Animal populations. It shows uh, a decline, a slow decline. Now I might, because they use the word decline here. So you might want to change up that word a little bit. But the test of a good paraphrase is at least if you have less than four of an original word used in a sentence, less than four original words, you're okay. Okay, as soon as you start to get up to four or five of the same exact words that they're using in their sentence, then you have a problem. But less than four is okay. So I'm gonna keep decline for now. It shows this fossil evidence. It shows a slow decline in um, the number. So I will change populations. Instead of populations, I'll, I'll say number in the number of animals um, over time. And bam, I just wrote two sentences about the reading. Okay, so I'm pretty much, I'm gonna move on now to the lecture. Because <laughs> on TOEFL, you only have 20 minutes to write this essay, right? Not a whole lot of time, so I wanna keep on moving. And I'm gonna use my transition word in contrast, the lecture. And I'm gonna go back up, what's my verb? Oh yay, argues is my next verb, argues. 
And let me show you my screen here, argues that. And I want to go to my notes again. And my notes for number two point says, oh yeah, this evidence uh, in North Dakota shows that it was a sudden thing. All these animals died on the same day. So I am going to write about that. Okay. In contrast, the lecture argues that. Um, there is evidence, and that's capitalizing one up there. There is evidence that shows, uh, I'm gonna, ooh, if I can remember North Dakota, that would be amazing. Uh, there's evidence in North Dakota <laughs> that, and instead of saying shows, because I know I use that a lot, I might say um, demonstrates. That's another good synonym for shows. So I'm gonna write demonstrates. The lecture argues that there is evidence in North Dakota that demonstrates there was a sudden mass killing of animals um, that occurred. Um, and let me go back to my notes and have some more details. All these animals died on the same day and then waves and debris came 10 minutes after the asteroid hit. So I might wanna bring in that detail as well. If I have it, great. Um, <clears throat> but let's see. So a sudden mass killing of animals that occurred in that region um, 10 minutes after the asteroid hit, um, there is further evidence that shows, again, there's the shows, demonstrates, right? So if I want to get away from that a little bit, I might change up the sentence a little. 10 minutes after the asteroid hit, um, evidence of waves, again, the specific term they used was seismic waves, but if you didn't catch it, I'm gonna pretend that I didn't catch it, okay? And just be cool with waves. Evidence of waves and debris um, was also found in found. And then boom. Um, and then remember I kind of put that little conclusion sentence. So that might be a good thing to do here as well. You know, it's again, it's saying the same thing. It's not volcanism, it's this asteroid, right? Um, maybe I'll say this points to the asteroid, asteroid um, as the cause of dinosaur extinction. And boom, there I have it. <laughs> Maybe I can say not the volcanoes, right? But I'll leave it at that. Okay, so there I go. I have one, I have two, um, and I have my three sentences um, for the lecture to cover that. And now I'm at this very last point. Yay, almost there, gang. Finally, so there's my last point. <laughs> what a good feeling. The reading, and I'm going to use the verb states because that's my next verb that I haven't used yet. So states. And I'm going to go back to my reading notes. This was all about iridium, right? So here's my iridium from volcanoes found at the mass extinction of the dino dinosaurs. So they're arguing that, hey, it is volcanoes because iridium, right, is present when volcanoes explode, when volcanoes erupt. Um, I can also go back here and look at some notes here, right? The dust carries the high concentration of iridium. So I'm gonna put it together here. The reading states that um, the dust from volcanic activity, notice I don't have to keep saying eruption, eruption, eruption. I could change it up a little bit. So the dust from volcanic activity contains iridium, and I'm gonna make a new sentence. This um, uh, iridium, right, was found around, right, that geological rock layer that marks the mass extinction event. So um, that's what I might put there for my second sentence. This iridium 
was found. Um, and really there's no way around maybe rock layer. <laughs> um, maybe I could say just rock, found in rock. Um, that, ooh, I can use that word corresponds. I had that from before, that would make sense to use here. So this iridium was found in rock that corresponds with the, um, again, they're talking about the time of these dinosaurs death, right? The, the end of the Cretaceous period, this is like when the dinosaurs died. So this iridium was found in rock that corresponds with the um, period or the date, maybe I'll say period of um, dinosaur extinction. Okay, and now I, there's my two sentences for my reading and now I'm gonna go over to my lecture so I can use this one on the other hand, on the other hand, the lecture, and for my song, I have points out that as being my last verb. Again, never forget your S, points out that. And I go back to my lecture notes and I see, oh yeah, iridium is also found in asteroids. And so it could be from an asteroid, not just volcanoes. So let me go and write that sentence. Um, the lecture points out that iridium is not only found in, uh, not only uh, emitted, maybe let's say, and that's by the way, a really nice word um, to use and not only to use, but just to know for TOEFL, they're always talking about gas emissions, carbon dioxide emissions. It's things that are going out, right? Things that are being, going out into the air, let's say. So the lecture points out that iridium is not only emitted from volcanoes, it can also come from asteroids. Woo. There we go, I got two sentences already out of that one. Woo. Okay, and um, I probably wanna point out that, is there any other little detail here? Um, yeah, it's not just the volcanic eruptions alone that would result in this kind of evidence. Okay, so volcanoes uh, alone, or volcanic, I'll go back to my volcanic eruptions. Oops. Volcanic eruptions alone um, are not, um, so yeah, I would use the word alone, not entirely responsible, maybe, <laughs> for the um, iridium found. Um, and then if you wanted to, again, put that little button on <laughs> um, and go back to that idea that possibly it's the asteroids, right, that are killing off the dinosaurs, the, this asteroid hit. Um, so I might say, I used therefore up here. Um, sometimes a nice little conclusion, if you're comfortable with it, might be thus. And I know that sounds like really fancy um, to use, but you can use it exactly in the same way that you use therefore. Um, it's kind of a nice thing to know. So thus, the asteroid theory is a, and I'm gonna give you one more little vocab word here, plausible one, okay? Now you don't have to sound like me in your writing, okay? You do not have to sound like this. You could still score very high without using this fancy word, okay? Just so you know. Um, but uh, this word I'm just throwing in here for vocabulary pur purposes. Again, you might see this in TOEFL reading plausible just means that it's possible, it's, it's logical, you might believe it, right? So that's, um, that's what we have there. 
And there is our full essay. And I guess since we're color coloring everything today, <laughs> I'll make the reading summary blue. And there's once again, one, two, three, four um, sentence summaries that cover the lecture. And there is the completed version. Now, I know what you might be asking, how many words, how many words? Um, let me stop my share and um, let me figure out how many words that is, okay? And I'll take a look at those questions that you guys are have um, coming in. Moment, one moment, let me give you the word count. So our complete word count for this one was 239. Okay, so this one had 239 words. Um, for a successful writing test number one essay, um, you don't need that many words. TOEFL has like a kind of minimum amount of words that they recommend, which is 150 to 225. So, um, you know, you don't necessarily need as many words. But with that being said, don't focus so much on word count. Okay, I know some students get like really crazy. You're typing along and they're like, oh, how many words? Oh, I'm on 50, okay. How many words now? Oh, 75. Oh my gosh, you know, and you're focused on the word count. Please don't focus on word count as you type. Focus on content. Focus on those details from the lecture. And then if you're like, Kirsten, I totally missed that third point or I don't know what was going on, you know, then you can, you can go back and beef up your intro a little bit Right, and you can use that strategy of you, at least you have two sentences for sure from the lecture, even if you missed everything. You can write one sentence that opposes the reading, right? If the lecture says, uh, sorry, if the reading says iridium uh, is found in volcanic activity as a result of volcanic activity, the lecture, you could say, the lecture points out that this is not necessarily true. I don't know what it says about iridium, right? But I know the lecture is going to point out that, well, it's not true. <laughs> okay. So that gives me one sentence. My second sentence would go back to that asteroid theory, right? Because the lecture is all about, hey, it could have been this asteroid. Therefore, a possible theory of dinosaur extinction um, is a result of, or could be caused by the asteroid. Mm -hmm. And so there you have two sentences where you didn't even really know what was going on with the iridium, but you got at least two sentences out of that lecture, okay? So there's always a way, never give up, never, ever, ever give up. Um, okay, so, and oh, you guys are doing writing in this, perfect, it's confusing, I know. How can I evaluate my essays? Okay, that's a great question, because yeah, uh, writing, you know, you can't practice it alone. It usually is best if you have an advisor, a tutor, a native English speaker, a teacher, ideally a TOEFL expert that knows how to construct this essay and knows where, where your pain points are and how to, how to elevate your essay. So there are lots of teachers out there. I could recommend a bunch to you um, who are really great. Um, if you wanted to work with me, I do, I do evaluate essays, but I like to work with you one-on-one -on -one first so that you know my style and that you know what I'm saying. And if I have a note for you in the, you know, in the thing, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I would feel really bad if you just gave me an essay and I gave you a bunch of notes and you're like, but Kirsten, I don't understand. What, what do you mean by this, right? So when we work together one-on-one, -on -one, then you understand what I'm talking about. You understand what I mean. You get me, I get you. And then, um, then our written correspondence becomes a lot easier. Um, but I'm sh I'm, I have a post on my TOEFL land website that lists a lot of TOEFL tutors out there. Do spelling mistakes affect score a lot? Yes. Um, you want your spelling to be really clean. Okay, now I'm not talking about one or two words, you know, like today I kept misspelling asteroid, <laughs> right, or environment. If you misspell like one or two words, it's not going to really negatively affect your score. But if every other word you write is a trouble word and you're not spelling it correctly, that affects my ability to read 
the essay and it slows me down because then I'm going to be like, oh, what's this word? Uh, uh, what's this word? And that's going to really negatively impact your score. So um, it is important to, to learn the spelling. And I would take those words, maybe the word environment or maybe the word asteroid or maybe the whatever, whatever word is showing up for you, right? And just practice typing them, you know, go back to old school, typing them like 10 times each, just so you're remembering the um, correct spelling. How to take good notes and be fast during the writing? Excellent question. I think the notes are the most challenging thing for students. That's why I mentioned, um, you know, you don't have to take all the notes. Use the power of your um, mind to really like listen and to create the picture that's going on with the lectures really talking about so that you remember the information and maybe one or two words from that will help you, you know, on the paper will help you remember it. But um, it is a skill that has to be worked on. So um, I would listen to a lot of lectures and tr you got a trial and error, right? It's like one lecture, yeah, try taking notes. Then the other lecture say, okay, I'm not gonna take notes. Let's see how much I can remember. Um, and then play with the balance of those two things. Um, do I evaluate essays or motivation letters for people who are applying to graduate studies? I sure do, yes. It's on my TOEFL website under get your TOEFL score and more. Um, you can also, I'm gonna drop my email to you guys. So if you um, want to email me, any questions too, um, you can. I'm gonna drop my email and the website is tofeland.com. So you'll see on that TOEFL land website, the um, under get your TOEFL score and more where I evaluate personal statements um, and congratulations on applying to graduate studies, by the way, yay. <laughs> hmm. Interested to find a teacher. Yeah, there's tons of teachers out there. Again, you can email me. Um, I'd be happy to help you in any way I can. I'm primarily working on reading and writing. so. If reading and writing are trouble spots for you, um, I'd be happy to help. And um, if you need help in like listening, speaking, I can uh, absolutely direct you to others. And I know Karen's here somewhere. If, I don't know if she's still here or left, but she's also helping students out with their speaking. Um, writing about reading or listening affects the score in the essay. Um, Samreen, maybe, and I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Um, rephrase your question. Let me, I'm trying to figure out what you mean. Writing about reading or listening affects the score. In writing test number one, obviously you're, you're writing about both the reading and the lecture. So my suggestion is to do two sentence summary from the reading and a three or four sentence summary from the lecture. Yeah, Zoom meetings. Okay, what about the conclusion? It's not required. Oh, great question. I'm glad you asked that. Yeah, it's not required. For writing task one, you don't have to worry about a conclusion. Okay, just don't even worry about it because you're basically gonna sound the same as you do in your intro. And that's what the reading said. And that's what the lecture said and the end, right? So it's too repetitive. Um, you, you want one for your writing task number two, your independent one, but it's not required for writing task number one. Okay. Um, so why did you not choose to use could or might when you were writing? Because we were talking about the theories and facts all the time and the tense is not as it is in the passage or lectures. Okay, great. I'm so glad you paid attention to that. Um, when I um, was talking, I did the one sentence that way so you could see that that's what I was doing. It's not, you know, as long as the meaning is there, it's not completely necessary to use it again and again. Now, a lot of times you're working with, let's say, evidence, like let's say you have some pottery, right? The reading says, oh, there are, there are these pottery jars that were found in India and they indicate this and that. And now they're extrapolating a theory from that, which is what we did in the dinosaurs, right? So you could use simple past tense. The reading says that, 
the pottery from India was used for, I don't know, tools or whatever. Um, and it's still okay. And in addition, you can use what you just talked about that could have. The reading claims that pottery from India could have been, might have been, would have been, whatever you're trying to express there, used for tool making. Okay, so you have a little leeway. Not every single sentence has to be the could have, might have, would have, but I'm glad, I'm so glad to see you're paying attention to that because that is important um, when, when you write. If I miss one of the items from the lecture, what is your suggestion? Okay, I think I might've went over that, right? Is like, you're gonna have one sentence that says, the lecture points out that this is not entirely true. <laughs> okay, because most of the time you're gonna have opposite situation, right? So um, I would use that as the first line if I have no idea what's going on. And then the next line, whatever, go back to the main idea. What's the lecture basically saying? In this situation, it was the asteroid theory was the, was the more probable theory. So you just go back to the main idea of the lecture and have that be a second line. Okay, that's kind of like your two desperation sentences that you can write. So, yeah. Thanks a million. TPO, I did not use a TPO. This is actually on my website. I have a bunch of writing task number ones that are up there. So if you just go to tofuland.com and go under writing, you'll see a bunch of practice writing task ones. They're not from the TPO. Obviously, you know, if you we want to work together or something, we can um, access those. Um, but as far as you know, doing it for example today, I, I chose not to go into TPO. Grammar class, you did email me about that. Yes. So I have an upcoming class. Thank you so much for asking. Um, in, let's see, upcoming class is going to be November, let me, hold on, my brain is mush, November 13th, okay, and we are going to meet on Saturday and Sunday for three weeks, so November 13th and November 14th is our first weekend, okay, so I'll explain what I do, because you want to know about grammar, this is super important. I think this is the number one reason why students are not getting their score. They're not getting their 24 or whatever score they need in writing, right? Because the grammar is preventing it. You've got the content, you've got the details, and now it's like grammar stuff that's preventing you. So in this class, what we're gonna do is the first hour, I pick a grammar topic related, right? Uh, maybe it's articles, maybe it's about non-count nouns, you know, like. You notice me with evidence. I didn't say evidence is. Oh, there are three evidences. <clears throat> it's a non-count noun. You can't say three evidences. You have to say just evidence. It's like water. It's like air. There's no S at the end of evidence. So, um, so we'll cover and like maybe the um, modals, right? Maybe we'll have a class just specifically like working this grammar point on modals, on um, using correct verb tense. Um, conditional statements, things like that. And then the last 30 minutes of the class, you will be writing in the class, just like real TOEFL. So if we're writing writing task number one, which we'll do three times, it's 20 minutes of time, right? That you are writing and here I am on screen with you. <laughs> and after those 20 minutes, boom, you submit your writing and I grade it. I give you feedback. I correct your grammar. I say, look at this, look at this, look at this. And then we do it again. Um, so you get three practices with writing task number one, and three essays there, and three essays with writing task number two, and the hour before we start writing is a grammar lesson. So um, yeah, if you want some grammar stuff, definitely look into that class. I'll drop you guys the link too if you want, um, if you want to look at the class coming up. Here it is. Thank you guys for staying so long and not like being so cool and not falling asleep. <laughs> I know TOEFL is, can be sleep inducing. Improve reading, where can I get, get info about that course? Yeah, um, 
I, I do have a reading course and that is available. Let me drop the link as well. And this course is primarily um, self-study. However, um, I would recommend, I don't know about you guys and online courses, but I know myself. And for me, sometimes if like I sign up for an online course and then I get the link and then I go and check out, I'm really excited and I check out the intro video and then I see, oh my gosh, all the stuff, all the modules, all the things. And then I'm like, oh, I got to watch TV or I got to take a nap, right? <laughs> like it's so overwhelming. <laughs> so what I highly recommend is looking at the, looking at the structure of the, you know, at the, at the course and just know yourself. Um, if you're all about self-study and you know, you're like, yeah, I'm all about this. It, there's a lot of stuff in that reading course. Okay. Um, but if you know, you're like me and you're like, uh, I don't know if I can do an online, um, I would do it in conjunction with, um, some privates with me. Right. So we would, you know, you can email me and we would set up a time to, to meet and have an hour where it's just us on the screen and talking about your stuff and like talking about how to do it. And then, um, then you can go and do, okay, let's do this in the, um, in the modules, you know, so that you're working both live with me and in the course. Um, I'm doing that right now with someone. I think it's working out really, really well. Uh, the reading course, you, it depends how fast you want to move through it. You could move through it in four weeks, like at a reasonable pace. Not, I mean, some people can move through it in two weeks, um, but they're just hardcore studying. But there's a lot in there. I would give yourself four weeks to complete the reading course. You are awesome. You're awesome. Plans for writing task number two. Um, not yet, but the day you have your exam, I think is the day we start our class. So, um, good luck. Email me if you want me to help you with that in any way. Uh, contact information is in the Zoom. Um, it's Kirsten at TOEFLland.com. And I think I dropped the links. I'll drop my email one more time just in case. Okay. So if anyone has any last minute, um, questions to drop in the chat. Um, please do so. I'm just going to say goodbye to my